All righty, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I saw some of you in the first session, and Ryan, again, my name is Brian Ladd. Um, I taught for 30 years, every grade level, so I'm familiar with it, and I use TCI almost every single year in my classroom, and TCI changed what I did, how I taught, and I think it changed my students' perspectives on learning, too. And Ryan? My name is Ryan Lonzo. I'm a national account manager of TCI, and uh, before TCI, I was a classroom teacher just like Brian. Excellent. And again, thank you so much for being here as you go through. So again, housekeeping, I know you saw this in the first session, but just a reminder, the chat is just for each of you to, to chat. Um, we're not really monitoring it. Um, if you have a specific question, please put it in the Q&A. And Ryan will, I'll check with, in with Ryan. Ryan will ask the questions for me. Don't hesitate to ask. He might interrupt and say, hey, Brian, this is a really important question. We need to do that. So no hand raises because it just, we don't have a lot of time with that, but again, the chat is amongst yourselves, and then the Q&A is for us. If you need the closed captioning, click on the closed caption bottom of your tools, and then that will come up for you. And make sure everybody can see your messages too for everyone there. So any questions about housekeeping? You're all going, we've already heard it. So, all right. Um, what I'm going to cover today. Key concepts that should not be missed in your units and lessons and where to find those, how to find those, how to best prepare for lessons, and then sharing best practices. The third one is the best. Uh, one of the issues I always have with um, in my district is we'd have professional development and the people who did it never understood what was going on in my classroom. The best PDs we had were teachers sharing with teachers. And that's what TCI is all about, Teacher Curriculum Institute, teacher sharing what they want, what they need, what works best for them. And that's what I want to make this particular um, webinar all about there. So we're going to start off and Ryan's going to put the link in the chat. And I'm going to go over some of the time sharing tips, just highlight them because I'll talk about them more in depth when I go live into a third grade program. But teacher tips. And what I did is created a Padlet. And I'll assume, Ryan, you put that into the chat for them. And for those of you not familiar with Padlet, Padlet is the latest thing. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, if you're using Jamboards, those are disappearing with Google in there. And so this is the Padlet of ideas that we've had. I'll give you a minute or so to um, click on that link. All right. And so... You can feel free at any time to add some of your own ideas, some of the things that you've done in your classroom, um, where you have been able to figure out how to do things, where you've been able to figure out um, faster ways to do stuff or what days I'm going to do it. Because I know sometimes if I have 30 minutes every other day, I have to set up labs. I have to set up investigational materials. What do I do? So some of the um, ideas that I've got from other teachers, and I'm just going to highlight this, and again, we'll go into more detail, is one, the obvious one, jigsawing investigations with stations. Have students do a st each do a station and then report out. By reporting out, they're getting that speaking, listening, writing um, standards met. And they're also coming up with different ideas because we may not have time for our students to do every single investigation. There's four stations or five stations there's no way I can do that in two 30 minute time periods. And especially for the teachers who have 30 minutes, they skip a day, then they have 30 minutes. A lot gets lost in, the, in those days that they're not using that. Another suggestion I had from teachers was often they have like a Friday fun day afternoon and they actually will get things prepared for the next Monday when they come back in there. Or they use that time to do an investigation where students are actually interacting, et cetera. Super simple science, that's the video lesson I talked about in my last session, I'll talk about in the next session, but it's a way to minimize the lesson and still meet those NGSS standards, and I'll highlight that. The enhancing learning components, and that's in the, um, that's in the teacher preparation. Other things I can do for my students that still meet those standards that are outside of the TCI curriculum, differentiating instruction, which is in the same area, one of the biggest things I get from teachers is I have these, if you purchase the TCI materials, you have these big kits and you have maybe two per unit of the elementary, or sometimes you're in a third and there's so much stuff to gather, even though it's labeled, even though it's, it's 
should be straightforward, but I don't have time because I am rotating between three, four, five um, different subjects during the day, especially with elementary, putting things in smaller boxes. So if I'm doing unit two, uh, lesson three, and I need materials, I'll put those in shoe boxes or smaller boxes in my classroom, even within the big tubs themselves. By the way, I often get asked, what do I do with the big tubs that I get? I've seen teachers use them to plant their plants in first and second grade, kindergarten first and second when they're using plants or use them for other things. My wife likes them because she puts Christmas decorations in them, which means she says she can buy more Christmas decorations. Um, so we take them home. But putting those investigations into smaller boxes, breaking them down, that way you'll know what to use. The what not to miss section, which I'll cover. I talked about that before. Also teacher-led investigations. You can do the investigation from the front of the classroom and ask students to come up and participate. And so that there's not, you may not need as much movement. The other thing that happens is I've been in classrooms where teachers that I, my, this particular year, these students, I cannot leave them alone to do a station because anything can happen. So therefore it'd be more directed. Um, and then I'll talk about when do I use the kits? When do I not use the kits for my investigations? So if, and again, I'll go into more detail. So if you have anything that you want to highlight, anything that you want to add, please just hit the plus button at any time. And even after this, the webinar is over, you can continue to add as you go through. Um, and this will be a landing point that you can go back and look at things and you can comment, you can rate, you can do anything you want with this Padlet there. So hopefully we'll get more because we're going to review this again at the, at the end and see what else people have added here. Any questions about the Padlet or adding on? Um, again, sharing your experiences is, is really important. And when I looking train, at, go ahead. looking at Q and A right now, and I'm not seeing any questions so far. Okay. Great. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into a third grade, kind of split it between K through five. So I'm going to go into a third grade lesson, and um, let me get into that one. And this is third grade. Again, uh, if you're not familiar with the navigation, if you didn't go with my first session, there's another session after where I'll be going through navigation again, the same thing I did with the first. But this is, again, the unit page. And what I want to look at is I want to look at the unit overview. One of the things about the unit overview is that um, I'm actually going to do unit two here. Uh, why? Because I just did it with my sister-in-law in her class a couple weeks um, at the end of the school year. She did this. One of the things that's really important about TCI, especially K through five, the lessons are flexible. You do not have to teach in order. You can teach the lessons with your ELA. I've had teachers who teach ELA and ELL through science. Um, so they can pick which lessons they want to do. They can decide I want to do this lesson, and, or I want to start with unit two. I know a couple of districts I work with because of their ELA program, their wonders program, they actually start with unit two for second grade instead of unit one. And so you have that ability and you don't have to do every lesson. That's really important to understand. But the first year or two, when you have the curriculum, you're trying to figure out. So we have the unit overview. And again, I showed that before. In the previous one about play. My name is Dad. This is a quick one. For I want to tell you about my weekend at the carnival. There are so many rides and games. First, I went on the swing ride. I didn't know what to expect. It lifted me off the ground and spun slowly. Then it spun quickly. The faster the ride went, the higher I swung. It makes me wonder, what makes me move in these different ways? And what made the ride spin around? Let's explore these questions and figure out how carnival games work. You'll also use magnets to design a new game. And so this would be your unit with the unit project. If you don't have time to do the unit project, again, within the journals themselves, they have the unit project. If you don't have time to do the unit project, it's okay. You can just move on to the lessons themselves as you walk through there, in there. Um, if I, When I open this planning section, again, this is a planning section, what to know. And I apologize for those in the first session. Some of this is a little redundant, but um, the what not to miss. Get, I'm trying to figure things out. I'm trying to figure out how much time I have. If you have one of those five days a week for 45 minutes, you're probably going to be able to do most lessons depending upon your students. But if you're just doing 30 to 60 minutes, it's going to be difficult. So what are the three thing, most important things I do? So have students use the online simulation. What happens when forces are balanced or unbalanced? And then there's the reference text, both sections one and two. 
How do you predict patterns of motion? What do I have my students do? And then is there this an excellent challenge where students go through engineering design process to create? And that's really important for our students, designing part of NGSS, using that SEP science and engineering practices as they walk through. The 3D progressions, anchoring phenomena and unit progression is not important in the tips other than reviewing what I need to I need to know here. So again, this orange box is for just for the teacher. Some of the other things that you can do is you can look at the bi biographies. Again, they're not a scope and sequence. You can offer those biographies for your students. Um, I won't be opening up, but here's your unit projects. If you're going to do a unit project, another tip, and we recommend it too, is present the performance assessment before they actually start the project. So they know where they're going. So they're going to test carnival games. And so when they're looking at the carnival games, they're walking through and they will know what they're going to do and what the end game is. And what do I mean by that? As we do each lesson, if you're doing the unit, we ask our students to go back to the unit phenomena, the anchoring phenomena, and actually apply what they learned in the lesson. And so as they do each lesson, they learn, they apply what they learn, and what will happen is they'll come up with their final performance assessment. And this is for all grade levels here. We provide a rubric. It's really important to give your students the rubrics ahead of time so they know and to walk through. If you're teaching kinder or first, have it on a big poster board or something in your classroom so they can look and you can walk through it together here. Um, it has each one of the 3Ds here. You may be focusing only on one of them. The performance assessment, again, I'm in the unit, not in the lesson. And then we revisit the phenomena and we talk about it. And we even start doing claim evidence and reasoning. Most In most states, reasoning really is a middle school ELA standard, um, but can't hurt to teach it. But we're always emphasizing the claim and evidence throughout the unit. And then we finish off with asking questions about the material. So again, this is the unit. I know I'm flipping through this fast. This is the unit and making sense of the unit phenomena there. So I'm in the unit overview and the project. It's your choice when you need to, if you don't do the unit, it's not going to affect your student's ability to meet the NGSS standards and learn as we go through. Questions about the unit overview or projects? No questions so far on those specific, um, on what you've shown. And just a friendly reminder to make sure you use the Q&A option if you guys have questions. Thank you. I, I chose this particular unit one because I got to help with it, but also because two of the units uh, two of the lessons, lesson one and three, are different. One uses materials, one doesn't use materials. So I'm going to open up lesson one. By the way, if you don't know, I know most of you do, whenever you have this, it's in engineering where the students are actually going to be creating something. So if you see the three dots that are connected in a triangular um, form, that is an engineering component. And I know a lot of teachers don't want to miss that because their students are creating, they're building, they're doing something with that. Not that they're not in others, but that's the project. So I'm going to open up green buttons or action buttons. What do forces do? And again, I'm looking here. I see my overview. I see my objectives. Objectives. Advanced prep. There are no materials from the materials kits or materials that you need to gather here because they're looking and they're viewing. And then it also says the text is most helpful during the investigation. So you'll want your students to read during the investigation. Now, some tips from teachers, sometimes they will actually use the journals themselves as part of their ELA program, getting them, they're looking at um, sight words. They are, teachers are, are having sentence completions up there. They're using high frequency, looking for high frequency words, et cetera, things you might be focusing in your ELA as you go through. Materials, again, there's really not any materials that you need to get other than students having their science journal and you using your investigation slideshow on this one. Learning progression, simple. When did they learn this? And again, this is kinder. And when at uh, third grade, they learned in kinder and then third grade. If it was fifth grade, they may talk about this. I know in eighth grade, they actually talk about this particular lesson. Differentiating, you just have to use some advanced prep. Again, I show this every time, no matter what I'm doing, because it's so important that we have access for all our students, no matter what their, their challenges might be. Enhancing learning, that was one of the things I put in the Padlet. You might say, okay, we really don't have time to do 
part of the investigation, but I want my students at home to watch this um, video on push and pull. Or I have a substitute. What am I going to do? Push. They can do the push and pull and also additional readings. These can be read-alongs. These can be specific readings. It depends on how you want to teach that. And then finally, science background. As I always say, a lot of us elementary school teachers, we're not science experts. A lot of social studies, English, humanities. And it's like, oh, science is kind of scary, especially when I get to fourth or fifth grade. And here's the science background for you to help you out as you go through. I'm going to shrink this up. I can do the super simple science. That's the video activity that I talked about in this particular one. I can. I might want to do this whole class. Before we get started, pause the video and gather these materials. Make sure to ask an adult to help you with your investigation. Super simple science. Fair forces. When you play games at the fair, you use forces eyes. But it is possible to win if you put the right forces to work. One ball. Your first stop is a game called One Ball. In this game, a blaster that shoots with a strong force throws the water farther. That makes so these are just all carnival games. Many of your students might be able to have been to a carnival or a fair and might have seen this. You might have had these at your own school. So we're asking the students to create their own carnival game. I had a teacher say, uh, yeah, I got the cans and I had a baseball and that didn't work. So she ended up getting styrofoam ball and styrofoam cups. And it was very easy. And she demonstrated it. And then the students demonstrated it. And so they can actually just do this very simply in creating a carnival. And we can talk about forces because when you hit the middle, it doesn't always knock down all the cans or the cups, as we all know, because we try to do that to win the toys and it doesn't happen for us. So this is just a super simple science. It's talking about forces. It's talking about the impact of pushing, pulling, et cetera. That's one of the ways that you can actually teach the lesson. This should take about 30 minutes. It should take about 30 minutes there. Questions on the super simple science. There's one for every lesson. So it's called a video activity also. Not seeing any questions on that. We had one, but it was specific to a user. So I think you're good to keep going. Sweet. I'm going to do the invest show the investigation slideshow. Just a couple pieces to it. Not a lot. So the observing phenomena. Have you ever played catch? So... I, as a teacher, bring in a ball. It could be a styrofoam ball. I'm throwing it up. How do you throw a ball to make it go? And a lot of your students are going to have answers to this. Remember, we're in third grade. When a ball is thrown at them, this is the phenomena. Some cans fall, but others do not. Set up a similar game. This is just like the super simple science, but we're looking at the phenomena itself. And then we'll watch. <laughs> Now, a, a tip that teachers are giving me is say, well, I didn't have time to show the video, but we just did it in class and I had it set up ahead of time. Again, with the styrofoam cups, styrofoam balls, they can be set up ahead of time, quickly done, just go three, two, one, and then have your students do it and then ask the same questions as you go through. And then describing forces. By the way, you see extension. The extensions are there if you have more time or you want to spend more time. They they were added so that teachers say, I want to go into more depth so you have that ability. You can save 20 minutes or that can be an entire science period or half a science period by skipping the extension itself in there. And I'm just going to quickly show, we're observing. And what they're doing is they're observing different images. And the ball gets hit, mini golf. And what happens to it? How does it change position? What happens to it? By the way, when I play golf, when I hit trees, it never goes into the cup. So I'm not sure how this always works in mini golf. Then we also have the swing and then the video and then the hockey puck. Depending where you live, you could pick one of these three. If you're up in Michigan, I'm sure the hockey would be very relevant to a lot of your, your, a lot of your students there. You don't have to show all three of these videos for your students to get the understanding. You can pick. So if you want to do this extension, you could do that. Then we go to the vocabulary and we're describing forces. And you could skip through this if you wanted to. To wrap up my science concepts, reading. If I go to the reading again and click on reading, 
green button and I'm going to go to the reading site. Here, what you can do if you want to quicken the reading, you want your students to just get the main ideas, you could have them highlight the main ideas for a quick read so that they're just looking at, okay, this is what motion is, this is what position is, rather than walking through the entire part. So you can minimize that reading as you go through. Um, and then you could have them come back to the reading if you wanted to do that. This would be online in there as you go through. Questions about the reading and tips about the reading. Um, if you, your students are, oh, sorry about that. If your students are just looking at the lessons themselves, then, uh, excuse me, the journals themselves and not looking at it online, you can pick and choose how you want to do that. But what's really important is you want your students to do show what you know, and in this, they're writing a letter. What can you do with this? You can combine this with your ELA. You can combine this with another one of your disciplines if you want to do cross-curricular. And you're all elementary doing cross-curricular. That's what, that's what we do in there. And then finally, we go back to that phenomenon and make sense of it. So I could skip a number of these slides. I could edit the slides too, just to focus on the ball and the motions and what happens. I don't have to look at the hockey puck. I don't have to look at all the different components. They're still going to meet those NGSS standards as they go through by doing that. Questions on the slideshow? Again, pick and choose. Go ahead, Ryan. No, I was just going to say I'm not seeing any questions so far on either the reading or the slideshow. Um, I'll add when I was a teacher and I wanted to, you know, speed things up, I would assign the readings beforehand. Um, you know, so that's just kind of one less thing that students would have to do going into the class. But I don't not seeing any other questions. Okay. And so this is one without really materials that you need, or you could just demonstrate yourself. If I go to again, I go up to the top and I go to lesson three. Uh, sorry. How can you predict patterns of motion? This is actually going to use materials. Again, as I pointed out, if you see a video anywhere, that's when you're going to need physical materials from either the kits that you purchased or the materials that you've gathered yourself. And so it's got all the different stations. It tells you what you're going through, going to do. The video is meant for the teacher, but a lot of teachers I know actually show this to the students too. And it's really nice to see what the investigation is supposed to look like. And by the way, we're adding more videos of teacher-led uh, access to teacher-led investigations and how it's taught, and that, those will be added over, over time. Here's the materials. What do I do ahead of time? Okay, now I've got to gather materials, so I've got to make sure they're there, and i got to have them by stations. So I could go station one ahead of time, put them all in it, um, a box, a shoe box, et cetera, station two, et cetera. Then I can just pull them out. And then when I'm done, I can just put them right back into that shoe box and put them somewhere, whether it be in the big tubs or somewhere else. So next year, I have those materials already sorted. Again, as we all know, the first year is a little more challenging, grabbing things, being becoming familiar with it. And again, this reading is most helpful after the investigation in this one. By the way, when it says most helpful, it doesn't mean you have to read after. You could read before, as Ryan has suggested, you could read during in there. Um, again, if you're kinder or first, you're probably reading together. It's a read aloud as you walk through there. Materials. Again, if I go to the materials side, I can see where things are located. Sometimes it's just, where do I find the materials? I'm not sure. So I hover over and it tells me which box and bin I can find the materials in, in there. Um, another thing that we have now under materials and it's a, re a fairly recent ad. Some of you did not have this um, because you got the traditional lesson guide, but the new teacher's guides that have come out is how do you predict patterns of motion? These are the new teacher guides um, and they're online in PDF form for you. Some of you got these, if you got your subscriptions, I guess, Brian, when did these come out this past year? Uh, yeah, I think earlier this year um, and they'll be, I, I, I think we've already released these. Um, or actually the science, I'm sorry, I was thinking about source studies. Uh, I think the science will be released later in the fall. Yeah. This is live, actually, this one. I just saw it yesterday. Oh, well, if you see it in the online thing, then yeah, it is released then. And that's what happens to us all the time, that we're always adding things and we're like, oh, that's there. So the teacher guide has um, been published in a much more teacher-friendly manner versus the traditional lesson guide that you got is a spiral. So if you want to take a look at that, it also makes a lot of suggestions and gives you hints as you go through there. 
let me go back to um, the lesson itself. Um, let's see, subsequent materials, sorry. And then I'm not gonna worry about learning progression. The differentiation is up there again and enhancing learning. And that's available in every single lesson as you walk through. Again, making it accessible to our students, just like the last one, et cetera. Super simple science. Round and round they go. Again, you can do this instead of the, the lesson, but I'm going to go into the investigation slideshow. Why? Because we actually need materials this time. And the first two seconds, they're both considered extensions, but um, I would do either one. If I just if I didn't have a lot of time, I'm just going to look at the first one. Observing. Anybody gone bowling? A lot of our kids have, or they've done something similar to bowling. How does bowling the ball after you throw it? And we're looking at carnival rides. Remember, if you're doing the unit project, the ultimate is car carnival games there. You remember playground swings, back and forth, back and forth. What do you observe? How did the swing move? Lots of discussion for our students, asking them questions. And what we find is they're actually answering questions as they ask questions too, and the questions that we'll get to. Here's our phenomena, carnival ride, just like we have. We always start with that phenomena. I'll show just a little bit of it. The big ship that goes back and forth, you know, what's making it go back and forth. And that's it just for that very quick. Now, if we want to use, do our um, recognizing patterns in motion, these are the different stations. You could have in these stations, you could have a teacher station. You can have two stations instead of four stations if you want to do that. You can assign your students. You could have multiple station ones, multiple station twos, multiple station threes or fours. By the way, I'm telling you a lot of things that you probably already know. So it's not um, something or things you already do in your classroom there. But it's saying sometimes we forget we have them. And then we can have our students do the station and they can report out. Have the group of four come up. Most of our stations are set for groups of four. Have our students come up and tell them what happened in this in this particular investigation. And they could share with the class and the class can ask ask and answer questions as they go through. Um, you might have two different groups doing station one. They may come up with very different observations. So you can discuss that. Lots of critical thinking going on when students are sharing as they go through. And the button up here is for teachers. Lesson support talks about how you, you can do the stations. If you have time, this is really fun. Set up all four stations. Um, depending on when you teach science, some teachers it's after lunch, some teachers it's like, okay, they're doing their ELA first and they go to science. You may need to set this up ahead of time as we go through. So if I click on a station button, it tells them exactly what they would do at that station. There's also printed materials too, as you walk through. And then it tells you how to set up the stations as you go through. And then I can do the vocabulary. Same thing, science concepts, what you know, making sense of the phenomena. The difference is this is going to be a little more time consuming for the teacher because the teacher has to gets gets to set up the stations for your students to make sure they have access. And if you want, again, you could do the stations in the front and just reduce those stations. Questions? Not seeing any questions, just someone who liked our new teacher guides for science, but no specific questions so far. I love the new teacher guides for science. I agree. I, I I saw the protocol and I, I think we really improved on the previous design. And I saw some of you doing social studies too. I think those were just released yesterday and they're online too. Um, you can those, are the cal those, those are for the Cal, those are for the older second cal edition cal ones, but uh, the newer ones for the third edition have been released for social studies. Good. So that that's really going to help you in there too, as we go through. Also things you can do is you, you look at the lesson game. So as I go through and I pull up the lesson games, and I'm trying to emphasize vocabulary. K and one does not have the vocabulary, two through five does. And so if I click on a vocabulary game, um, it's it's like a video game, which I'm really bad at, but it's <laughs> interesting students. And then you're collecting things as you go through. <laughs> And just randomly picking uh, the answer. So you can have the students play this. 
Mm -hmm. Many of your students access it. They can play it over and over again. A lot of teachers who use this, it helps with the vocabulary. Why? Because they're just doing it over and over again and they're learning that vocabulary because their goal is to get as many points as they can as they go through. So that's it's one of the gamifications. I don't know if anybody went to the gamification and learning through games that we have created along with the uh, lesson game too. With the lesson game, K will only have four squares and one will have four squares and there's more squares as you go up through five. But this really helps as, again, as a formative review than the summative, but your students, the best way to use this, I think, especially with the primary, maybe all the way through fifth, is to do it as whole, a whole class rather than individual as they go through. So the students, you can ask, you can find out whole class, how the students are doing, how the students are, um, what they might be struggling with there. Questions on the, the games? Not seeing any questions on the game so far. Cool. All right. The tips on assessments, and I get this, this question often, it's like, whoa, fifth grade teachers, um, I'm in California and fifth grade is when they're tested science and they're supposed to know everything K through five. And teacher got, oh, what, how do I do? What do I do? And I can't give as many questions as I used to because the new NGSS standards, there's a lot of questions that ask my students to do things. So right now, this is this TCI question. By doing things, I mean like think, to analyze, to analyze the image and then describe it's not straight regurgitation, it's action. Here is, in this particular one, they go to the fair, they ride on several rides. Um, which picture shows rides of motion? Which ones do not? So they're, it's taking a lot longer for students to get these, do these assessments. Best suggestion when you're introducing this type of assessment to your students, and some of them will actually have data and they have to analyze the data, et cetera, is to have your students start in small groups. Have your students give them some questions and have, teach them how to take this kind of a test. Because it's not necessarily just a regurgitation or level one or level two assessment. It's asking the students to apply what they learn and to do something with that information as they go through. And so what's causing the swing? Have your students, here's one, think like a scientist. These questions take a long time. So they're gonna drop the ball. They're going to try to figure things out. They're looking, they have to calculate. This question itself, this test, I would probably pick three questions on this test if I was given an assessment so that my students could show what they know, but also show me some basic facts that they have in here. It, it takes a long time to do the assessment. So start in twos and threes for students just to learn, give them a question and they could talk about it, talk about how they figured it out, what kind of answers they gave before you actually give the assessment as a whole. And they're like, whoa, how do I do this? Because learning how to take these types of assessments is a challenge. What do I mean by that? We're asking our students to learn as they're being assessed, not just to regurgitate as they're being assessed there. Questions on the assessments. You can create your own assessments also. So Brian, we did have a question about the vocabulary games. Um, someone wanted to know if we had vocabulary games based on an entire unit. Um, unfortunately, we don't at this time. Um, but if you ever come across something you'd want to see or a suggestion, uh, feel free to shoot us an email. I'll put the email into our chat right now. It's info at teach TCI. All new features, everything we come up with has come from a suggestion from a teacher. So we take teacher, teacher feedback very seriously. Um, so to answer that question, we do not offer unit vocabulary games at this time. Yeah, and I, I've heard people ask that, and that's yeah, why we're creating unit assessment. So also under the question mark, under feedback, you can put right in there, hey, I got a great idea. And I'm just a word, they look at the number of people who submit and it's like, oh, we got 80 requests today. And there's like, all of a sudden it starts to move up the hierarchy as you go through. And I always tell teachers, because they say, oh, we'll just submit it per district. No, have everybody in your district submit it. Ryan's going, ah, don't do that. Um, but the, the more the merrier, because if just one person suggested, they said, well, if just one person brought up that idea. If you got 20 people, friends, neighbors, et cetera, it's, it becomes more important for them. It's just like anything that we do in life there as we go through. Okay, I, those were just some tips as we walk through. Is there 
what I'd like to do is go back to the Padlet itself. Oops, I, I'm gonna give you one other thing before we go, um, before I go to the Padlet. Um, Ryan, if you could put that link in the doc, in the chat. Um, what I did is um, I and a couple other people compiled because teachers are always going, which lessons do I need to go into the materials kits? I don't wanna open up every one to see if there's a video. So what we did, and feel free to download this document, is we took every unit and every lesson that actually uses physical materials, either from our kits or that you would need to gather yourself for every grade level. And so feel free to look at this document. It's just a resource for you. Um, if you're in second grade and you're in second unit, it's like, okay, when do I need to grab materials from the kits? Okay, well, lessons one, three, four, five, six. Or I'm looking... What materials do I need for lesson two? You don't really need any materials, just what is built into the, it's either the picture cards or what's built into the slideshow there. So again, again, this is a document for you to have in this particular lesson. Questions about this document? Someone just asked, where can I get it? Um, I put it in the chat. So if you open up the chat, it's the most recent, um, it's the most recent link. And I, believe they're going to put it on the TCI website, but it was just something that we, I created not too long ago. And there's like, okay, this would be really good for teachers. Um, I was one of those teachers that love shortcuts so that I could actually not have to have everything around. So in there, any other questions about this? Okay. Not, not seeing any right now. Let's go back to the teacher tips. And Brian, just a heads up, you got about 12 minutes left. Okay. Let's go back to the teacher tips. Is there anything that you want to add on to this. Let me give you a couple minutes to add it. You don't have to put pictures. You don't have to put anything. You just really quick, quickly click and just put um, uh, ELL Peak Studio. And that's, and that's, you can just publish that and that's good enough. And I'm going to put this link to this board right here uh, again in the chat. Someone's asking, um, Nikki's asking if we have a middle school version of this document. The, the right here? No, the teacher tips. No, because no. <laughs> um, I would recommend, Nikki, you send an email to info with a link to the document that Brian shared and just say, you know, I would really appreciate a middle school version of this. Um, and our content team will see what they can do. And Nikki, this is the one you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any, I know you folks have some good tips out there. And it doesn't even matter if it's redundant from what I have put up, it's just a different way of looking at something. And for those of you who only teach 20, 30 minutes, for those of you who have the whole time period. Not seeing anything else, Brian, at this time. All right. Um, is there anything here that you want me to cover again? I can I'm, go back to the actual um, TCI component here. Okay. Um, a couple other things that you might want to look at as you're going through biographies. And when I do the navigation, don't do a lot with that. But if you want to show somebody, I mentioned this in my first session, the Benjamin Benneker, but you can actually get a lot of information to your students. I'm going to show just a quick clip of this particular one. You can assign these. Uh, you can just show them for your students. Do you like puzzles? Benjamin Banneker loved them. He solved puzzles and made puzzles for others. Sorry about that. His favorites were math puzzles. Once, Banneker wanted to build a wooden clock. He solved that problem like a math puzzle. During his lifetime, he had seen only two other timepieces, but he figured out how each gear and wheel fit together. Then he carved all the parts and put them together. The clock kept the correct time for many years. Banneker was African-American. He lived when few African-Americans were allowed to go to school. His grandmother taught him how to read and write. Banneker especially enjoyed looking at the stars. 
He borrowed books. And so that second grade, they have um, second and first, they talk about motion and stars and lights um, and where in, where in the where in the sky is the sun. So this is something you could look at, something you could um, show your students. Again, it'd be accessible if they're K through five. Reading it might be more of a challenge in your primary levels, but for when they're hearing it, they're hearing the story, much more accessible for your students. And you can discuss the questions. What challenges did he overcome? What information, et cetera, in there? This is not in print form. This is only available online, the biographies themselves, as you go through in there. Pacing guide. Often when we talk about tips, teachers like, so what's the pacing guide look like? When I look at this, I see the pacing guide. Again, you can see the different areas because K through five is integrated, earth, space, physical, uh, excuse me, life science, physical, earth, space, how many minutes are there. I look at this pacing guide and I go, okay, hundred minutes, I don't have time. But what you can do is you can export the pacing guide to a CSV, an Excel spreadsheet, and then it becomes your own document. You have the ability to manipulate the minutes. You have the ability to change. And you also have the ability to share this document with your teacher, with your fellow teachers, people in your district or at your school. So you have that kind of access on that pacing guide. Because as you look at this, most of you say, I don't have time to do that. Remember, it's flexible. You have the ability to um, do not do all the investigations or not do all the lessons as you walk through. So flexibility is key. You might start with weather and climate. You don't have to start with environment and living things. Um, a lot of teachers do K-1-2 with the, it's a lot of it has to do with plants, animals, et cetera, because students can immediately grab onto that as you go through in there. So the pacing guide is right down here. I can also find it under support. And that's this is gonna be my last tip. And again, there's professional development that you can look at, skills and toolkits. Remember, we all know that everything we teach is integrated with everything else we teach in the elementary school level. Here's toolkits, things like asking questions. Um, what are my three, um, my three Ds that I have to learn? DCI, CCC, and SEPs, measurements using science and engineering practices, assessment strategies, standards and framework. And here's also the pacing guide. I'll do, let's do a first grade pacing guide this time. And this pacing guide goes by weeks. So we have it by weeks as well as by minutes. I enjoy this pacing guide better because I like to see the see it in weeks. The minutes scares me sometimes as I as I do that in there. Brian, can you show how to get to the other version of the pacing guide? Someone had a yes. question on it under our reference. Yeah. So I'm in the menu bar. And by the way, I know I go quick, so it'll always pop up. And if you go all the way to the bottom under reference, you'll see the your NGSS correlations, but you also see the pacing guide, career profiles. I hit pacing guide and this shows you the amount of minutes that you would need. If I wanted to look on it by weeks, I can go the pacing guide here. Middle school, they're, they're still working on the different ones, but these are I know there's a couple of middle school teachers that are K through 12 here, um, but this is the pacing guide for each one. If I pull up the kinder, here it is by weeks also. And you can just play around with it. And, and pacing guides are always good to see what you would need, what you can do there. So the support is a really good area to look at, assessment strategies, especially skills and toolkits. I don't know. For those of you who've been teaching a while, you used to get your big box of curriculum and there'd be all these soft bound books with all this information with skills, et cetera. We have it all on there in PDF form for you in there for both ELA and ELD as we go through. Any other questions in our last couple of minutes? I'm not seeing any other questions at this time, Brian. Um, we've got about four and a half minutes left. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chat a link to the Zoom lobby. So um, if you guys wanna head back to the lobby once we're done for your third session, um, you can just go ahead and click on that link I just put in the chat. But I'm not seeing any other questions at this time. So I know a lot of you have seen this before. I just wanna remind you that we have lots of ways to support you as we as we go through um, profession and app PD again, can't recommend it enough. I actually did it yesterday to review things because we have our new slides. So it's the TCI 2.0 that's 
out there. Don't forget $50 Amazon gift cards, hashtag TCI Summit 24 on either on X or Facebook. And then these are the uh, options that you have for your next session. If you're going to science, um, I'm doing the navigation again. Um, and let's see what there was another science in here or you can also do top investigations k-5 through science laura's doing that she's awesome um she helped found it and then there's some that are crossing positive environments with oil and gamification also so lots of really great options in the next session as you go through in there and then finally ryan put this into this link into the chat we really appreciate, I hope you got a couple of tips out of here. My theory is always, if you can take away one thing and use it in your classroom right away, that's a B. If you can take away two or more, you just got an A um, for being able to apply what you learned there. So hopefully you, you were able to get one or two tips out. You can use them in your classroom. Feel free to go back anytime and add something to that Padlet. That Padlet will remain live and in action for forever. So it's up there. So until they get rid of Padlet, of course, um, but you have that ability to access. So feel free to contribute also at any time. And you can do it anonymously if you would like. So thank you again for what you do. You're amazing. And I, I appreciate you and everybody at TCI really appreciates you. So thank you very much.